Hey y'all, I am so happy and excited to get back on here with you. So who do we offer early testing to? So women who have higher body mass index, um, that's a calculation that compares your height and your weight. Um, and those who are elevated or abnormal and have a risk factor such as they may have a family history, they may have a prior history of gestational diabetes, they may be of certain ethnic groups that are considered to be at risk, including um, the Hispanic population, uh, African American or Pacific Islanders, um, Native Americans, um, or they may have had a very large baby in the prior pregnancy, usually nine pounds or greater is what we're looking for, may already have some evidence of underlying uh, glucose impairment. So this may be your patient that has polycystic ovarian syndrome, or this may be your patient that is a pre-diabetic based on pre-pregnancy testing. So these are some of the more common um, risk factors that we look for and try to identify those women who are more likely to screen positive. And so we do offer the early testing. If the test is early, if the early testing is negative, we repeat the test at the usual screening time, which is between 24 to 28 weeks gestation. Um, if someone had an initial elevated, um, an initial elevated screening test, that had a negative diagnostic test, we may go straight to the diagnostic test at that 24 to 28 week gestation. So how do we monitor? So during pregnancy, we monitor daily the finger sticks of women because it's so important. We have such a very, very short time period to get the mom controlled and ultimately improve her outcomes with her pregnancy. Um, so it's intense. It's intense. We get right on it. We get a, as much education to the mom as possible. Now, mind you, a lot of women who are being diagnosed with gestational diabetes may not necessarily have the healthiest lifestyle. So for example, if you are an inactive for whatever reason, uh, inactivity is also a risk factor. Um, and if someone doesn't have a healthy lifestyle, they don't sleep very well, they have a high stress level, they don't eat healthy fruits and vegetables, they don't exercise regularly, or they're just very inactive, then they have to make a large lifestyle shift. And that can sometimes be a mind trick, right? So having to change your entire life, your entire lifestyle in a very short amount of time because your, your baby depends on it is sometimes something that's very, very stressful and overwhelming for some moms. And so that's what I wanted to kind of focus on today and talk about now that we got the technicality of things and an understanding of gestational diabetes. Uh, now let's talk about how do you really psychologically deal with living with diabetes. So for those who are not aware, for moms who are affected by diabetes, we do finger sticks before they eat in the morning, call their fasting blood sugar levels. And then we do postprandials, either one hour after they ate their breakfast, lunch, and dinner, uh, or two hours after they ate their breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And sometimes if the sugars are really elevated and very uncontrolled, we may actually do additional testing at bedtime as well um, for to get a better understanding of their fasting blood sugar levels. So we oftentimes will include some um, nutritional support. Uh, so oftentimes oftentimes a nutritionist or a registered dietitian who will work one-on-one um, -on -one with patients, ideally. Uh, I know depending on the setting uh, or where you are, you may, may or may not have these types of resources. Um, but certainly, thankfully, we do have a lot of online virtual tools now. So that is able to give moms additional support. Um, so you're talking about not only testing your, your fingers four times, maybe five times per day, but in some cases, some women need to be medicated. And um, one, one of the primary medications that's used is insulin. So sometimes moms go from never having to deal with diabetes before to now checking their finger sticks four to five times per day. And in some cases having to inject themselves with insulin. Um, thankfully now we have the um, blood monitors that that, that um, allow women who are having to give themselves multiple doses of insulin to not have to stick their fingers, um, but can just put on the monitor on their arm and have, and have the readings of their blood glucose levels. So if you're a mom and you are having to check your finger sticks 
multiple times per day and you are on insulin and multiple doses of insulin throughout the day, you may be a candidate for the continuous blood glucose monitoring systems. And you may want to check with your insurance company to see whether or not you are able to obtain one of the blood glucose systems so that you don't have to um, stick your fingers multiple times per day. And then at the same time, administer insulin multiple times per day. That's a lot, right? So thankfully these continuous glucose monitoring systems are now more available to make, to make life a little bit more easier for our patients, which is amazing. Let's talk about the psychological part, because that's often the, this, the hurdle that women have to get through and get over. So how do you psychologically get through this? So we talked about the multiple finger sticks. We talked about the, the multiple doses of insulin or taking some perhaps a pill formation, such as your metformin. Um, and then now you have to see a high-risk pregnancy doctor who's monitoring the growth of your baby and the, and the health of the pregnancy. You have your generalist who is managing your pregnancy. You have your, your registered dietitian that you're seeing. Um, and it's just a multitude of things. Um, you have your pediatric cardiologist that you may be seeing if for those who have their early diagnosis and need a fetal echo to be done. So there's a lot going on, a lot, okay? And then you have multiple labs that are being monitored and checked. It's a lot, okay? So then, so we don't wanna overlook the psychological aspect. So then how, what are some tips? So here are some tips for those who are struggling uh, to make it through. One of the things that I find important is really the support of a good partner. Okay. So one of the things that women ask me all the time is, or one of the topics that we talk about is how do I get my partner or the father of the baby to be more involved? Um, or, you know, depending what the partner system is, you may be in a different type of relationship, but ultimately the non-pregnant or the non-caring partner. How do we get them to be more involved? One of the things is if you're having to make lifestyle changes, then involve your partner. Because a lot of times when we're talking about unhealthy habits, it's not just the patient that has an unhealthy habit. It's an unhealthy habit. It is oftentimes the entire family. So let's involve the entire family. Let the whole family feel like they are part of the pregnancy. And this is a great opportunity also to get the other siblings involved. Sometimes they want to kind of be a part of the pregnancy. So this is a great opportunity to say, hey, I need to walk at least five times per day or exercise at least five times per day. And I may need some encouragement. Okay, let's get the grandmas walking. Let's get the auntie and uncles walking. Let's get the siblings walking. Let's get the, the, the partner walking, the father of the baby walking and exercising with you. Okay, that is a huge benefit to women. It makes you feel like you're not alone. It makes you feel like you're not in a pregnancy alone. This is truly what creating a village is about. About, okay? Um, so that's one way. The other thing too, sometimes you need an outlet of people who truly understand what you're going through. And in some offices, you may have a group appointments or group classes uh, where we talk about, this was more common pre-pandemic, but where we had group sessions where we would talk about gestational diabetes and the eating habits and all the things, lifestyle changes that women have to undergo in order to get the best outcome. And sometimes it really helps to be in a setting with other women who are also going through exactly the same thing. Okay, but maybe those groups aren't existing, but we do have virtual sessions now. And oftentimes too, there are lots of support groups out there. So find yourself a mom group, a support group specifically of women who are affected by diabetes, or perhaps where you are getting your prenatal care may have classes where you can sit down and talk to other moms who are dealing with exactly the same thing. So that's another way of finding some type of outlet. And then sometimes it's just hard. Sometimes it's just straight hard and you don't want to talk to anybody. You don't want to talk about it. You want to talk to nobody about it in your family, not your girlfriend, not your, not your man, not nobody. You're just mad. You're upset. And that's a part of grieving. Okay. Sometimes grieve, we grieve the, the change. We grieve the unexpected outcomes, not just a loss of the pregnancy, but the unexpected outcomes having to deal with these types of situations. And you may need a therapist. That's the bottom line. 
Sometimes we, in, sometimes we include a therapist on our team when we're taking care of women who are dealing with such very important conditions like, di like gestational diabetes, because it is such a mind trick um, to get through it that sometimes we need someone who can psychologically support you and know how to do it and give you this coping mechanisms to do so. So that's another way of, 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 um, so that's another tool that you have or support or resource that you have to be able to endure. And then sometimes we have to remember to celebrate the milestones, right? So I celebrate as many milestones as I can because it is a big deal. Going from finger sticks in the 300s to controlling your finger sticks down, your fasting down to below 95 and your postprandials below 120 if you're doing two hour checks, is a big deal. Like unless you've gone through it, you don't know how hard it is to make that type of change that rapidly. So we celebrate it. Celebrate the wins always. If your hemoglobin A1C started at 13 and you got it down to six during your pregnancy, come on now, girl, you are doing it. Okay. You are doing it and we need to celebrate the wins. If your baby is growing at a good rate and is in the 50th, the 60th percentile, not the 10th percentile or lower, and, and even for those who are and you're doing the work, still celebrate because as much as we do our best, sometimes our bodies, you know, just have these outcomes that we have to deal with. And that are sometimes hard to deal with, but celebrate the wins. You know, if, if you also are hypertensive with your diabetes and you've got your blood pressure under control and you don't even need to take blood pressure meds, come on, girlfriend, you are doing the job. You are in there. Let's celebrate the wins. And so that is my tip for, for anyone who's out there. Who sh and sometimes you may need to have a moment, right? You may need to have a moment to be pissed, to be upset, to scream, to be like, why am I being affected by this? Why do I have to deal with this? Let it out. Let all those emotions out. Because as much as we focus on eating and as much as we focus on hydration and as much as we focus on activity and exercise, that is not it when it comes to controlling our glucose levels. If we're not sleeping well, and sleep is when our body really stabilizes our glucose levels. If we are in, uh, under a lot of stress and we're not dealing with that stress and we're not de-stressing, that will also, that's releasing those stress hormones. You know what those stress hormones do to the body? Guess what? Deregulate your sugars. So you want to make sure that you are doing a holistic approach to your glycemic control, to the control of your diabetes. And that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you have taken some nuggets here and there. And for those who have family members, who are diabetic or affected by diabetes during their pregnancy. Now you have a little bit more insight as to what they're dealing with and what their struggles are. Now you can offer yourself to be a support. Sometimes don't wait for the person to ask, just volunteer and say, hey, do you want to walk today? I know you got to walk. I know you got to exercise. I'm down. Let's go. Let's exercise together. So that is what creating a village is about. And it takes a village, right? You guys, it takes a village. So thank you guys for hopping on here with me. It's always a good time talking to y'all. I missed y'all. I missed y'all. We've been busy doing some great things. We have great, great, great news coming. I can't wait to share with y'all. It's coming very soon, very soon. So stay tuned. I'm gonna tell y'all very, very soon what we have coming up. But we've been working hard, y'all, hard. So I haven't had the opportunity to get on here as much as I used to, as much as I want to, because I love these sessions. I love having these moments with y'all. Damn. However, if you, not however, and, you know, sometimes you got to learn to use the right words. And if you love this video, you love the information I shared, you love the nuggets that we shared, you love this conversation, make sure you like, don't forget to like, don't forget to like, don't forget to share, share that button. See that arrow that, that goes that way? That's the share button. That's the share button. That's what you want to click. And comment. Oh, we love your comments. You guys are very consistent with commenting. Okay. And we are here for it. We're here for the comments. It creates a beautiful community. And sometimes you don't, you never know who's reading your comment and who's encouraged by your comment. So I love you guys for commenting. Thank you for doing that. And make sure if this is your first time seeing one of our videos, where you been? <laughs> well, anyway, we are so happy that you have joined the community. 
Okay. And as a part of the community, drop us a message. Let us know that you're joining on for the first time, that you're starting to follow us for the first time. We appreciate you guys for doing so. And for those who've been watching all our videos, but you have not subscribed, what you waiting for? Subscribe, girlfriend. Subscribe. Subscribe because that is what gets this information in front of the crowd. So even if you're like, I'm done with my pregnancy or I don't want kids, but you want to help us get the information out there, doing these things help us to do so. Like, share, hit that notification button so you know when we post a video, subscribe, comment. All these things count. Not only do they count in terms of getting us in front of others, we just appreciate y'all. We appreciate our community and we thank you guys for hanging out with us always. Okay, we have some great topics coming up. I can't wait to talk about a lot of them because y'all know we got a lot to say. Okay, we appreciate you, guys. appreciate you guys. This is Dr. T, always the hand behind the handle of Healthy Bump Club. Make sure you subscribe to Healthy Bump Club right here on YouTube. And if you haven't done so already and you're in the IG community, Hit us up, stop by, shout us out, say hello, say what's up. Hit us up in our stories. Oh, we our stories be on fire. Yes, girls. We be having some good conversation in our stories. Also hit us up on our posts. That's again, how we get ourselves out front before the masses. We are trying very hard to get these critical information out to people who really need it. So help us do that. Um, and at, on Instagram, you can find us at Healthy Bump dot club as always this is dr t signing out see you next episode love you guys